In this video, I'll show you how you can generate citations in the style of any journal you like. At the end of the video, I'll also show you how you can write an entire scientific article in our markdown, without the need for additional programs. I'll be showing how you can render citations in PDF as an example here, but this method works identically in Word and HTML. The first step is to find the articles that you actually want to reference. For biologists and clinical scientists, PubMed and Web of Science is probably what you'll be using the most, but this method is the same regardless of how you found the article. Once you've found an article you want to cite, simply search for a Document Object Identifier, or DOI, and copy it. If there is none, try to find a PubMed ID or PubMed Center ID instead. If you can't find any of these, then most scientific journals at least have a cite button hidden somewhere that you can use to skip to step 3. The second step is to convert your DOI, PMID or PMCID to a BibTeX entry. You can simply Google something like DOI to BibTeX and use any of the free online tools out there. For DOI or PMCID, I usually go to doi2bib.org. Paste the DOI or PMCID here and press Get BibTeX. Copy the BibTeX entry to your clipboard and proceed to the next step. If you only have a PubMed ID, then I recommend using TechMed. Paste your PMID here and press Query. Check that the article listed is the one you actually want, select it, press Export, and this will generate a BibTeX entry that you should copy to your clipboard. The third step is to open RStudio and go to File, New File, and select Text File. This will open a plain text editor where we're going to paste our BibTeX entry. You can change the name of the citations to something that will make it easy for you to remember what it was about. To add more citations, simply press enter once more and you can paste the next entry. Then save your file as citations.bib. I will now briefly explain what we're actually doing, but if you just want your references rendered already, you can skip ahead to step 4. The entry we just pasted into this bib file contains all the information we could retrieve using the online tool. The authors, the journal, the edition it was published in, the year of publication, etc. When you knit your R Markdown file, the entries in this file will be accessed to retrieve all the relevant information. This way you will never have to search for any of this information manually, nor will you have to worry about the style or consistency of your citations. Step 4 is to open our studio again, and this time go to File, New File, and select R Markdown. Whether you want to create a Word, PDF, or HTML file, this works identically. First, save your file in the same location as the BibTeX file we just made. Then add a line in the preamble that says Bibliography, colon, a space, and then citations.bib. Now you can cite any paper you added to the BibTeX file simply by writing square brackets at name, where name is whatever you named the citation. For example, my BibTeX file contains a citation for the survival of human coronaviruses on surfaces. I named the citation Surface Survival. So if I want to cite it, I can write something like this. SARS coronavirus 2 can survive for up to 28 days on surfaces, period, and then square brackets at surface survival. You can also cite two papers at once by separating them with a semicolon. If we knit this file, you'll see that both citations are now added to the text. In addition, at the end of the article, a list of used citations will be printed in a consistent format. This works the same for Word, PDF, or HTML. If you want to be able to click on the citations and go to the reference section, simply add another line to the preamble that says link dash citations colon a space and then yes. That brings us to the final step, choosing a citation style language or CSL. In the example I just gave, the citations were rendered as the default Chicago author date style, but you can use any style you like. To do so, simply Google the CSL file for the journal you're interested in. For example, Nature CSL. If you can find such a file, download it, or if you can find the code like this, simply copy all of it and paste it into a new text file in our studio. So for this example with the Nature CSL, 
go to File, New File, and again select Text File. Then paste the code we just copied and save this file as nature.csl in the same folder as the rest of our files. Then go back to your markdown file and add one last line to the preamble that reads csl colon a space and then nature.csl. If we now knit our document again, you'll see that both the citations have changed as well as the list of references. This is especially useful if you try to publish to a prestigious journal because these have high rejection rates, so it is quite likely you'll have to find another journal to submit to. Not to worry though, just use a different CSL file and all references will adjust accordingly. If you want to cite an R package, simply use the function citation, with the package name enclosed in quotation marks. To cite R itself, simply run citation without any arguments. To cite RStudio, run rstudio.version with a capital V. If you want to cite a book, you'll have to find its ISBN number. Then simply Google something like ISBN to BibTech and use any of the free online tools available. All of these I just mentioned will return a BibTech entry that you can copy to your .bib file. If you don't know where to find a BibTech entry, as a last resort, you can always type your own. Now for the final part of this video, writing an entire article using only RStudio. To be able to do this, you have to install a package called articles. Type install.packages and between quotation marks articles and wait for the installation to finish. Then go to file, new file and select our markdown. This time navigate to from template. Here you'll now see a list of journals which are currently available from the articles package. Choose the one you want, for example PLOS, give it a title and press OK. Knitting this file will create an entire folder with everything you need. If this is the first time you knit a document like this to PDF, TinyTech may have to install some missing LaTeX packages. If you're using an older version of RStudio or programs like MicTech or MacTech, this is probably where you run into errors due to missing LaTeX packages. But if you install TinyTech like I showed in the first video in this series, then all missing packages should be installed automatically. Give it some time to download whatever is missing, and there you go. An entire LaTeX template for the Journal Plus, correctly rendered with affiliations, line numbering, and of course, citations. If you've ever submitted an article for publication, you will know the pain of correctly entering everything in the right format. Press enter once too often in Microsoft Word and a page might not render correctly anymore. View an older file in a newer version and the entire layout is messed up. Same goes for switching between documents saved on Windows or Mac. LaTeX does not suffer from these quirks and generally has a more professional typesetting. But it is much less accessible than simple Word files. By using the articles package, you can use the power of LaTeX without really learning what LaTeX is or how it works. And of course, once you have learned a little bit of LaTeX, you can start adding commands directly into our markdown. If a journal asks for a raw tech file rather than just a rendered PDF, you can simply add another line to the preamble over here which says keep underscore tech colon a space and then true. I have uploaded all my example files from this video, including the BibTech, to be freely accessible. You can find them in the description of this video. Thank you for watching.